Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to explain what a linear regression is and show you how to conduct and interpret one using intellectus statistics. Linear regression is a type of statistical analysis used to determine if one variable or a set of variables significantly predicts a continuous outcome variable. There are a few terms used for linear regression that are mostly synonymous. When there is only one predictor variable, the analysis is sometimes called simple linear regression. When there are multiple predictor variables, you may hear the term multiple regression or multiple linear regression. The procedure is the same in both cases. The only difference is the number of independent variables. Let's start with an example of a simple linear regression. Imagine you want to find out if the amount of money spent on advertising can predict total sales revenue. The independent variables, also called explanatory variables or predictors, represent items that may have an influence on the dependent variable. In this example, advertising spend is the independent variable. The dependent variable, also called the response or outcome variable, represents the outcome of interest. In our example, sales revenue is the dependent variable as it is being modeled to depend on advertising spend. Like many analyses, regression is often used in statistical hypothesis testing. A hypothesis test is a procedure for testing possible explanations for the data in our sample. The hypothesis being tested is called the null hypothesis. In linear regression, the null hypothesis states that there is no relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. So, the null hypothesis for our example is that there is no relationship between advertising spend and sales revenue. The goal of regression is to determine whether the data in our sample are consistent with this hypothesis or not. If we observe a strong enough positive or negative trend in the data, we can reject the null hypothesis, which means we are ruling it out as a possible explanation for the data. Let's look at this visually in our example. The black line represents the null hypothesis, no relationship. Let's add our observed data. Now we can add the OLS line. We'll get into more detail about this later. This indicates a positive trend in the data, so the null hypothesis can be rejected. Regression formalizes this process by calculating the total amount of variation in the dependent variable that can be accounted for by the independent variable. If you have more than one independent variable, remember that would be a multiple regression, it can also provide an estimate of the effect each independent variable has on the dependent variable. There are multiple ways of doing this, but the most common is called ordinary least squares, or OLS regression. This is best demonstrated visually. First, let's plot both variables with the independent variable plotted along the x-axis and the dependent variable plotted along the y-axis. Next, let's add the points representing the observations in our data. Finally, let's draw a line through the points. For each of those points, let's draw a line from the point to the line of best fit. This is plotting the residuals. A residual is the distance from a point to the line, or the difference between the observed value from our data and the value predicted by our model. They are presented here as the vertical distance from a point, the observed value, to the line, the predicted value. OLS gets its name from how it manages to find the best fitting linear model, where the differences between the predicted and observed values will be the smallest. The residuals are also important in determining if regression is appropriate for the sample. One assumption is that the relationship between the independent and dependent variables is linear. Regression is unable to account for any curvature unless more advanced techniques are used. In addition, the residuals must be normally distributed for every value of x and have equal variance throughout. Having the correct level of measurement for the outcome variable is also important for the analysis to run correctly. Don't let this overwhelm you. Intellectus will automatically check assumptions when you conduct your regression. Now that you understand the concepts, let's conduct our regression. First, we'll upload our data. Before we do anything, we want to verify that all of our variables have the correct level of measurement. 
In regression, the dependent variable must have the scale level of measurement. In our data set, the dependent variable is sales revenue measured in dollars, which meets the level of measurement requirement. The independent variable is advertising spend, which is also a scale variable. Now that we've validated the levels of measurement, we can proceed to conduct the regression analysis. To conduct a regression, expand the Regressions menu, then click Linear Regression. Select your dependent variable, for us that's sales revenue. Then select your independent variable, which is ad spend. Then click Calculate. Let's review the output beginning with the assumptions. The first assumption is normality. This is examined with a QQ scatter plot. We're looking for any points with large deviations from the line. In this case, the deviations are small and roughly follow the line, so we can say that the normality assumption appears to be met. Hovering over the plot will reveal a useful tooltip with a few examples of how normal and non-normal data will look. The next assumption to evaluate is homoscedasticity. This is examined with a residual scatter plot. We are verifying that the points appear randomly scattered. This is the case, so we can say the homoscedasticity assumption appears to be met as well. Just like with the normality plot, hovering over the plot reveals a tooltip with examples of both homoscedastic and heteroscedastic data. The next assumption is multicollinearity, which calculates values called variance inflation factors, or VIFs, to check whether the independent variables are highly correlated or not. However, since we're only using one independent variable, we don't need to check for multicollinearity. The last assumption we need to check for is outliers. These may have also been visible in the residual scatter plot, but we can find them more easily by looking at the standardized residuals plot. We want to make sure that none of the vertical lines extend above the horizontal dotted line. If any outliers are found, the data should be examined in more detail to ensure those values were measured properly. If the outliers are correct, it may indicate that a different model is more appropriate for the data. In this case, there are no outliers, so we can say the assumption is met. Now that all the assumptions have been examined, we can proceed to the results. The results of the regression were significant, indicating that about 36% of the variance in sales revenue is attributed to advertising spend. The coefficient for advertising spend is 0.75. This means that for every $1 increase in advertising spend, sales revenue increases by 75 cents on average. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe to our channel for more helpful videos.